couldn't seem to fall asleep. So much on my mind, searching for that peace, peace I could not find. And I knelt down to pray, Lord, help me, please. So there's no need to cry. I'll supply all of your needs. Soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story is, I let go and I let God. Let God have its way. That's when things start happening. I stop looking at back then. I let go and I let God. Let God have its way. Its way. Running out of time, casting stones and glass, houses throwing shadows in the shine. Promises and pockets they fold, the then they hide when the curtain pulls back. It's just me on my side. We believe in the flash, sold on the hype. Talk a brighter tomorrow's, but the future the ain't right. They swore they deliver cash checks with a smile, but all they do is get the from a smile. The uh, uh, words in the air, floating like smoke. Promises heavy, but they broke when they spoke fast. President-elect Trump. My name is Rashad. I'm 12 years old and I go to a Catholic school where I'm one of the few black kids in my class. I'm writing because I want to tell you what it's like for kids like me and why I think schools should teach more about race and our real history. Every day I try to fit in and be like everyone else, but it's hard when kids make jokes about the color of my skin or say things that make me feel like I don't belong. Sometimes they don't even realize they're being hurtful because they've never learned about the experiences of people who look like me. They don't understand how words can hurt how history still affects us today, and how people of different races can have different lives because of what happened in the past. I think uh, if schools taught more about the history of black people, Native Americans, and all people of color in this country, kids would understand each other better. If we learned not just about Martin Luther King Jr. and slavery, but also about how laws and ideas from back then still affect us now, maybe kids would be kinder. Maybe they would understand why my family worries about things that others don't, and why I sometimes feel scared for my brothers and sisters just because of the color of our skin. Teaching about these things doesn't mean we hate America. It just means we want to make it better for everyone. I love my country and I want it to be a place where no one has to feel different, left out, or scared. Please help schools teach all of us the truth so we can grow up to be kinder, smarter, and more understanding people. Thank you for listening. Sincerely, Rashad Jackson. Dear President-elect Trump, I am writing this letter with all the hope I have left. I came to this country to give my family a chance at a better life. We have built our lives here. My husband, my children, and I. They are American citizens. This is their home. 
I work hard every day, pay my taxes, and try to do everything right, just so we can stay together. If you send me away, my family will be torn apart. My children will lose their mother, my husband will be left alone to raise them. I understand the laws, but I beg you to look at us not as statistics, but as people, as a family, trying to stay together. Please, let me stay, so I can watch my children grow up, be here for them, and continue to be a part of the community I love. We just want to keep our family together, to keep loving and working for a better future. Thank you for listening. Sincerely a mother, a wife, a worker, a human being. Dear President-elect Trump, my name is Emily, and I'm writing to you because I don't know who else to turn to. I am only 14 years old, and something terrible has happened to me. My father did things to me that no one should ever have to go through. It hurt me in ways I can't even describe. Now, I'm pregnant, and I am so scared. I don't want to have this baby. I am just a kid myself, and I can barely understand what has happened to me. My body isn't ready to have a child, and I know that my heart and mind aren't ready either. Every time I think about it, I feel sick. I just want to be able to heal, but I can't do that if I'm forced to go through with a pregnancy that came from something so awful. I know some people don't believe in abortion, but please, I'm begging you to understand that sometimes it's the only way to save someone like me. I don't want to be reminded every day of what he did to me. I just want to be able to have a future, to go to school, to be a kid again. Please, don't make girls like me suffer even more. We deserve a chance to get our lives back. We didn't choose this, and we shouldn't be punished for it. Thank you for listening. Sincerely, Emily. Dear President-elect Trump, I am writing to you as a transgender person who is in the middle of my transition. This letter is not just for me, but for so many others like me who are now afraid of what the future holds because of new laws that could take away our access to the care we desperately need. For years, I struggled to understand who I was. It wasn't until I began my transition that I finally started to feel at peace in my own body. For the first time in my life, I am beginning to feel like I can be myself. But I'm only partway through this journey, and I'm terrified that I won't be able to finish it. The treatments I've been getting are not about changing who I am, but about finally living as the person I've always been inside. When you pass laws that restrict access to health care for trans people, it feels like the world is trying to tell us that our lives don't matter. Transition isn't something any of us take lightly. It's not a phase or a choice. It's about survival. Without the medical support I've been receiving, I don't know what will happen to me or to others like me. Imagine what it would feel like to be halfway to becoming the person you are meant to be, only to have that chance ripped away. It's like being told to live in a body that isn't yours, to be someone you're not, forever. We are not asking for special treatment. We just want the chance to live our lives authentically, safely, and fully. Please don't take away the care that so many of us need just to survive. We are people, your neighbors, coworkers, and friends. We have dreams, families, and hopes just like everyone else. All we ask is to be allowed to finish what we've started, to live our lives as who we truly are. Thank you for listening. Sincerely, a trans American trying to be whole. All right, strap in everybody. Today we're going deep into a kind of sensitive area where religion and politics collide. Uh Oh, sounds intense. It is, it is. But fascinating too. We've got Brian Short's documentary, Why Trump? Hmm? Trying to figure out why rural America went all in for him. Yeah, that was a head scratcher for a lot of folks. And we'll be weaving in insights from life coach Malachi. He's all about belief systems and how they, well, they kind of run the show, even when we don't realize. Oh, yeah. Malachi's great at making you think about the stuff we take for granted. You know, those hidden convictions that wind up shaping, well, everything, even the political landscape. It's like he throws down this challenge right off the bat, you know, to the listener. Like, what, what do we actually believe? And why? But then he goes even deeper. Like, how do those beliefs, the ones we just kind of inherit without thinking, how do they actually affect our lives? Yeah. And not just us, the whole world around us. Yeah, that's deep stuff. Yeah. It's like he's telling us to pause, hit the brakes, and really look at those assumptions we carry around. Exactly. And then he throws out this wild concept, the collective consciousness. Okay, now that sounds kind of out there. It's not as wacky as it sounds. He uses the stock market as an example. Think about it. 
When enough people believe in something, even if there's no real data to back it up. Oh, I get it, like hype, right? Yeah, that's hype. It can actually move the market, create a real tangible effect. So now think about that applied to politics, how we see candidates, the stories we buy into. It makes you wonder, right? about the power of those beliefs we're not even examining, especially in such a charged arena. So we've got this idea of examining our beliefs and this collective consciousness shaping reality. Mm. But how do we tie that to understanding, well, Trump and why he resonated so strongly in rural America? Well, that's where Shor's why Trump comes in. Mm. He set out to understand this very thing. And the first thing that hit him was this stark contrast. Like he's comparing the hardcore Trump support he's seeing in rural areas to what he knew back in Chicago. Almost like he found this whole hidden world with a totally different set of rules. Exactly, and as he goes deeper, he starts to get some insight into these communities. Many are feeling forgotten, economically squeezed, they don't trust the government or what they see as elites. And here's the link back to what Malachi was saying. Religion and those traditional values they're a huge deal in these folks' lives. Okay, I'm seeing the connection. They saw Trump as someone who gets their struggles, mm -hmm. someone who represents a simpler time when their values were front and center. It's a powerful longing for a time when things felt right to them. Right, and you can see how those deeply held beliefs about faith and tradition would blend with their politics. Absolutely, and to really grasp this, we need to factor in the historical context of Christianity in America. Okay, history lesson time. Well, the YouTube video we have gives a pretty fascinating, even though it's quick,